Hello everyone, are you ready for another episode of To Be Released? I'm Wilkie and I'm here by myself. Um, I tried to get Zen on, but I think he's taking a big old nap. That's what I'm assuming he's doing. So it's just going to be me today on To Be Released. And let, well, you know, let Zen enjoy his nap, you know what I mean? Um, so let's get into it. Since uh, Zen isn't here, I don't really want to talk about um, LR Cell. I'll wait for him to actually be here because he actually has some uh use with the cards so let's actually talk about android 16 the brand new one uh that everyone was hoping was going to be agility and that ended up being intelligent so here's android 16 he is um the android cell saga leader for 120 percent three key uh his passive skill is attack and defense 100 percent up high chance to guard all attacks defense 100 percent up in all allies, key plus three and attack 50% when your team has Super Saiyan Gohan or Super Saiyan 2 Gohan attacking in the same turn. Uh, okay. And then his link skills are Android Assault, Mechanical Menace, Gentleman, Tough as Nails, Infinite Energy, Rival Duo, Fierce Battle. And his categories are Android, Artificial Life Forms, and Android Cell Saga. So, there's no real way to like address the fact that his typing sucks why would you him being intelligent is like a slap in the face for every single thing that it like helps team building at all so you can't run him with just gohan because if you run him in double gohan then he in essence becomes he gets zero boost zero key zero anything he only exists to be off rotation and constantly constantly floating and occasionally giving key plus three and attack and defense attack 50 percent when there's a super saiyan gohan and super saiyan 2 gohan attacking that same turn uh so you could run him with cell or you could run him as the leader but then that requires you to pull either um well first of all you have to pull him but you then have to use a cell friend but you still need to pull lr gohan as well and it's i don't know and then when you actually use them it turns out that like so here's something that's unfortunate because i did pull i did pull android 16 and i also don't have a good super saiyan 1 gohan or a super saiyan 2 good gohan to go with him either it's just my options are limited and it sucks and so the card is basically like useless i don't have any real use for him at all he just kind of he's not as good as like the fighter z1 if you don't actually have a good super saiyan gohan or super saiyan 2 gohan on the team to constantly make up to um use his key plus three and attack 50 percent all to everyone um and I don't know, man. Like, this feels like a waste. This felt like a wasted opportunity because if they just made him agility, there would be no problem. And they didn't. So it feels like this card is stupid and not actually good and only good because that he gives 50% to Gohan, but also you're forced to use this card that isn't great if you don't have... I don't know, fuck it. Whatever, this is getting a 1 out of 5 on the big boy scale. This is maybe the shittiest boy we've ever I've ever seen. He's so badly designed in so many ways, and it's such a dumb fucking thing that they decided to make him the way they did. If you disagree, that's fine. I hate absolutely everything about him, and that it, it it just feels like a waste of opportunity. If he was agility, I would have less to say about him. But as it stands now, with his int typing and the fact that if you didn't, if you don't have any of the LR Gohans that are Super Saiyan two or Super Saiyan one, then he's basically boosting what is a category of shitty units until Super Saiyan two, the STR one gets his um, easy A. Then maybe he might jump up the ranks. But as of right now, he's a one out of five. Like I'm sorry nothing nothing about this unit is excusable it's just all bad as far as i'm concerned uh and it takes too many cards to actually make him good but on the flip side uh one of the best super attacks in the entire game the bird fantastic i love it uh that does not give him up to a two out of five he stays one out of five for me so that's that's android 16 uh real shame they should have made him agility and now let's go on to some questions, because when it's just me by myself, man, uh, we always get to questions super quick. So let's start with uh, questions from uh, YouTube comments from your boy, your, chip, uh, your boy Chips Ahoy. Question, do you think having two versions of the game has held back Dokkan? Hashtag play Pokemon Masters. No, not really. 
Um, the only thing that makes it annoying is sometimes they try and cater to global in some ways. And then that only thing, and I'm not saying like, oh, they shouldn't. The problem is, is that when they do it, they, then they give it to Japan, but they make it way better than what global got. So global ends up feeling like good for that brief moment where they were released. And then like later on when they get hit in Japan, they're like way better. And it's like, what the hell? Why, why couldn't we get this? Why couldn't, when Hit was released in um, North America, for example, he was a fantastic unit. He was great. No problems, right? But then he comes to Japan, and then we get a way to farm him. And we get, like, an entire new, like, stage and stuff. So it's like, what the fuck? And then we get LR Kale and Khalifa right afterwards. So it feels like it's a continuation of that idea that helps build his team. It's a big mess. So... I don't know. It doesn't hold it back. I don't know if it was like 100% running on both sides that it would be better than what it is now. That's my current feeling on it anyway. Thank you for the question. And now we'll move on to Twitter. Uh, we'll have uh, first question comes in from Kevin who asked, here's one, uh, well, here's one now. What character would you like to see in Smash regardless of it actually is possible? Um... <sighs> This is a tough one. Like, if, if I was going to use my card on anything, it, I'd want it to be on the most obscure character that only, like, five people would be hyped about. So, something like Travis Touchdown, or even, like, Francis York Morgan, now the Deadly Premonition, and has is getting a sequel on the Switch, which is fucking crazy to me. Um, for those of you who don't know what Deadly Premonition is, it is amazing. It is one of the most what-the-hell games out there. It is... Uh, bad in playing i would say but it's beautifully broken and the story itself is like it's something else you have to experience it yourself so there you go it's francis york morgan and uh, travis touchdown would be my choices um next question comes in from super saiyan god super saiyan johan who asks what's what's the goal right now the current goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers. Or are you talking about what's a Masu to pull? I don't know, dude. You're going to have to wait for the next LR, I, I, I'd imagine. <laughs> so good luck with that one. Uh, next question comes in from Air Fighter, who asks, What's your thoughts on the Toby Spider-Man movies? Uh, they're good. Even the bad one, the third one, is fun in its badness. Uh, one is, of course... A fantastic buildup of the character. Uh, it's one of the very few Spider-Man movies that... Because, you know, there is a lot of Spider-Man movies that don't dwell on the fact that he stayed a teen for an extremely long period of time. And I appreciate that because uh, Sam Raimi, at least in his vision of the character, was like, why don't we get to the adult stuff right now and not have to deal with him being an uh, asshole teen for a whole bunch of time? And so he skipped all that, and then all the other movies are about, what about if we just have Asshole Teen Spider-Man? And I understand that uh, Asshole Teen Spider-Man is important to Spider-Man, but also I'm interested in adult Spider-Man, especially since comics um, have a hard time letting Spider-Man grow up and actually have a relationship and deal with real consequences to his actions. So to see something like, not have real consequences, but you, you know, like the idea of him growing up, he's always in a uh, perpetual Peter Pan state in the comics, so it's nice to... And anytime he does grow up a little bit, he ends up being set back to square one, which is very annoying. But so, yeah, my overall thoughts on Spider-Man is that I think they're not counting Spider-Verse. They're my favorite of the Spider-Man movies, with the second one being um, the uh, fuck the Far From Home ones. I guess the the new the new try and then the worst ones are the Andrew Garfield Spider-Mans, which is not like anything super like crazy to say. All right, let's go on to the actual questions now. We got from Nighthawk. He asks, who, what is your Mount Rushmore of your anime protagonist and antagonist? So like four protagonists and another separate uh, four uh, antagonists. Also, will you ever get to make a series dedicated only to mod stories that are really interesting and funny? Uh, no, not an, an entire series dedicated to mod stories, just because eventually we'd run out. So um, we're glad to share them when we get them, but... You know, if we made an entire thing out of it, we'd run out of material eventually. <laughs> That's unfortunate about it. Um, my Mount, Mount Rushmore protagonists. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll try and do it to like back and forth. So I, I would say for me personally, it'd be Jonathan and Dio. I like their rivalry. I like I like them a whole bunch. I like their um, the two sides of two different coins completely. 
um, uh, Joe and Rikishi from Ishida No Joe. That would be the next one right there. Uh, hmm. Goku and Frieza for me. That's another personal one, obviously. And the last one would be, let's see. Um, hmm. Astro Boy and Pluto. There you go. That would be my four. So those are my four pro uh, protagonists and my four antagonists that I would see on a Mount Rushmore. Uh, my own personal one. So there you go. Thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Kaze NT, and he says, Will you make Zen join the Wesker army? I don't have enough um miracles in me to actually let him make him enjoy playing wesker so it's just going to be me on the wesker side for a very long time and him constantly dying to weskers or something and uh next question comes from warble g who says are di players carried and that is um morgan's second ability darkness illusion in teppin and the answer is no, because you do have to run Hulk, a bunch of Hulk cards, and there's plenty of decks now that can actually, like, losing a unit isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, or, like, X, who had, can get Gaia armor now and kind of can shut down all of Morgan's shit because none of her halts are random except for one legendary card. So, yeah, I don't think, I don't think so. That's my current feeling. Um, there, it's fair enough. Ryu, pair, Ryu, Ryu is carried. <laughs> That's about it. Um, Soul Rock asks, how many times do you think Penta alone has used the GIF slash video of it? And I used for the questions answering. It's a question of Inosuke from uh, Demon Slayer uh, doing his little contortionist thing where he puts his head be below his uh, legs. And I'm going to say infinite. I'm going to assume he's used that a whole bunch because uh, he loves Demon Slayer. And as he should, it's a very good. Uh, next question comes in from Jonathan Joestar, who asked, Hey, Wokey, can you recommend me some of your personal favorite anime? Yeah, sure, I can. Um, a lot of my favorite animes end up being um, anime movies, for the most part. So, stuff like um, Akira, I really like. Uh, which is our, the obvious one. Um Jinro, the Wolf Brigade, stuff like that. Pap All of Satoshi Kon stuff. So Paprika, Perfect Blue, Millennium Actress, Tokyo Godfathers, and then he also has an actual anime series called um, Paranoia Agent, which Paranoia Agent is also fantastic and is uh, one of my favorite anime like episodic things out there. Um, and to some of the new stuff, I uh, obviously I'm caught up on Demon Slayer, and that's pretty fun. Uh, if you like to see a lot of pretty animations, go check out Demon Slayer. Uh, and I like a lot of the other stuff around it, too. A lot of people give it a lot of shit, and I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. But also, I don't expect... I guess I wasn't expecting the highest of art or something. I don't know what the hell people were expecting. But I think it's perfectly fine. And the animation is, of course, gorgeous, and the music and everything around it is uh, top-notch. And it goes very well with what's being shown. Uh, some other stuff. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. A lot of Studio Ghibli stuff. Grave of the Fireflies is from uh, Studio Ghibli, and I feel it's not as talked about as some of the other stuff. And it's mainly because uh, Grave of the Fireflies is extremely sad, but it's also one of the. I think it's one of my the greatest animated films in general for me. So I would say check that one out for sure. Um, let me see some other stuff that I feel. I think that's a good. Uh, br uh, like a good meter of stuff, I suppose. If there was anything more specific, you can ask me in the comments and I'll try and think of some other stuff. I've seen a lot of, um, anime stuff over the years. Um, sometimes it's hard for me to remember all of it, but I do enjoy all of it because I love animation and I think it's all fantastic. So there you go. There's some, for sure, check out any of Satoshi Kon stuff. He's fantastic. Uh, and I, especially Perfect Blue is uh fantastic for around the horror time because it's uh very scary next question thank you for the question jonathan joestar next question comes in from special fire force matt who asks, now that we know a season two is coming to smash ultimate who do you want in the game uh francis york morgan and travis touchdown that's it thank you for the question next question comes from and i'll also answer for zen dante uh next question comes in from Team Yaw Asin, who says, 
what were your thoughts and opinions on the Nintendo Direct? And I thought, my thought and opinion is, is that it was fantastic. It was great. It was a, a whole different barrage of stuff, which is fantastic. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was very good. And that's about it. That's like uh, my honest opinions on it is that it's very good. Nintendo is very good at like, I don't know when this happened, but the Switch is turning into something where it's like, in the beginning, it was a lot of ports of uh, third-party stuff. And now I guess some people are like, uh, enough with the third parties. Not realizing that the biggest problem with Nintendo has always been is that they don't support third parties very well. So the idea of them being like, no, here's a third party, fucking Dem- Deadly Premonition 2. Like, that's insane to me. That's great. And it should be applauded for what they're doing. I guess what people don't want is for them to turn into Microsoft, where Microsoft has a little bit of a problem with their main series of games but it's never going to get that way so i think uh what it showed was fantastic i wasn't a 100 i was looking for something surprising and also for a smash and i got both those things so there you go that's my general feelings of it and obviously play deadly premonition i would 100 percent love to play it on the channel with zen so he can experience deadly premonition for the first time um but i don't have the current setup to do that so until that day happens hey we'll look forward to it and the final question comes in from Wet Towelettes. If you woke up, if you woke up in in a village in the middle of the desert in Kenya with no conceivable way out, how long would it take for you to decide to kill yourself? And the answer is, I would never kill myself. Um, if I'm in a village and I'm living my life, then I'm just going to continue living my life. <laughs> it seems silly to me to be like, oh no, I'm in a situation where it's not ideal, but also I'm not being tortured i'm not like dying all i'm doing is living in a village in kenya and that sounds fantastic especially if it means like i got no bills on me i don't have to worry about anything the bummer thing is i don't know where the fuck my family's ever gonna find me and i'm sorry for them to know that they'll um you know they'll have lost me but i can't um but in order to eventually meet up with them again i can't in good faith ever kill myself so there you go. And I believe, I know this was a joking thing, but I also believe in general the answer is to not kill yourself. So don't worry about it. And that's all the questions we got for today. Thank you everyone to bring it in. Sorry that uh, Zen was taking the biggest nap. The hardest of naps. Um, but hey. It happens sometimes. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and now here's the outro for To Be Released. It's, um, hey kids, remember, don't play Dokkan, because if you do play Dokkan, you go to hell before you die, and that's no good.